All right. It's 530, so we'll get started with our meeting. Uh, Councilman Brown will give us our invocation, and then we'll say the pledge to the flag. Thank you. Please stand. Uh, let us pray. Uh, dear Lord, thank you for this opportunity for us to gather and discuss the city's business. We ask you to watch over us and keep us safe. May we continue to uh, practice uh, good hygiene, social distancing. I'd also like to uh, say a special prayer for the uh, Dr. Geroy Stuckey family. And no doubt he's left a legacy here in the city. And we want to commemorate him and remember he and his family during this time of grieving. I also would like to, to remember uh, uh, Johnny Butts and Mr. Jeff Washington who were uh, slight, one was slightly injured, the other was seriously injured in an accident today involving the weather. I want to lift them up and may they uh, be healed appropriately. Dear Lord, be with us as we go through the rest of this meeting. May everything we think, say, and do be pleasing to thee. Amen. 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 allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I'd like to welcome everybody tonight. First item on the agenda is approval of the March 4th City Council meeting minutes. So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hear none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Item number two is approval of bill for $100,000. Second. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hear none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Item number three is approval of purchases over $3,000. Mr. Jones? We yeah, have one purchase to consider um, our light duty rescue vehicle. Um, here's a lot of rescue equipment to access. Um, was in an accident and it was just rear-ended while it was stopped beside the road on a call. Um, it was going to be repaired, but it's going to take eight months to a year, and we need something to carry that gear in the meantime. Um, <clears throat> we checked on our last bid, and within a year we can go back to the low bidder um, for a vehicle. And what we recommend to council is that we buy a 2021 Dodge Ram 1500 quad cab for $20,227 from Beck Auto Sales. Um, we have confirmed with the low bidder that they will still honor that price. Um, that will give us a vehicle uh, while we're waiting for the light duty rescue truck to come back and we will use it uh, at our new fire station uh, when we get it, get it built. All right, Council, y'all heard staff recommendation. What's your pleasure? Move by approval. Second. <clears throat> yeah, motion by Mr. Davis and second by Mr. Edwards, I believe it was, to approve the purchase in discussion. Hear none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. All right, item number four is budget presentations by representatives from the youth program. Uh, Keith Dublin and Lawrence Beautiful, I think, is postponed there. St. Yes. Patrick's Festival Committee and Dublin and Lawrence gave, uh, Recreation gave their the free council. Mr. Jones. All right, from the uh, Dublin Youth Council. Um, hey, hello, Mayor and Council. Uh, my name is Rock Rogers, and I'm the city manager for this year's Youth Council for Dublin City. Um, I stand before you today on behalf of all of our Youth Council. Um, committee members and I'm just here to say thank you for your continuous support um, for all of our youth programs. Due to social distancing everyone could not attend however the majority um, who you see behind me um, have participated in representing our home town or state on a national level, level this year because of all of y'all. Um, November 2020 several students had the pleasure of representing the city of Dublin at the National League of Cities conference um, I really feel these you know, these events are important because we had the opportunity to learn leadership skills, how to promote civic engagement amongst youth, um, and how to assure equality and respect for every citizen. And uh, it's really focused on what we should do to be the change in our community that we would want to see. Um, though this is my 
senior year. I look forward to witnessing the continuous growth of our programs um, with y'all's support. And I just want to say thank y'all again for letting us be a part of it. So, thank you. Hi, Mary Council. I know you guys have seen me up here before. Um, my name is Robin Sarant, and I am the uh, Ward 3 Councilwoman um, on the 2020-2021 Delta um, City Youth Council. Um, the 2020 NLC City Summit Conference was my third time attending on the 10th and 11th grade year as well. Um, and because of Youth Council and the numerous opportunities presented to us, I feel like I have um, continued to grow each year that I've served on this council. Um, this year I did take a big leap and I applied for a position on the Congressional Cities Conference Youth Delegate Planning Committee. Um, so this committee, um, it was 15 students, they were selected from across the country. I was actually the only one chosen um, to represent the state of Georgia. Um, it was an honor to not only serve my state but also the city of Dublin for the year. Um, I was appointed to plan the curriculum for the national health disparity crisis in our country. Um, and that's the um, workshop that I was over and I helped plan. Um, it was an eye-opening experience and I gained so much knowledge from my peers and the congressional leaders that we worked with. And I want to thank you guys so much for the opportunity because without you guys it would not be possible. Hello, Mayor and Council. My name is Darius Knight and currently I serve as the City Clerk for the 2020-2021 uh, Dublin City Youth Council. Although I am the youngest on the council, I wanted to jump into the program and learn as much as I could. Um, and I was fortunate to attend NLE's uh, City Summit in November and the Congressional City Conference in uh, on this month. Each year, the National Committee is formed within the Youth Education and Families Council. They allow teens from all 50 states uh, to apply and for the 2021-2022 term, four teams from across the country were selected. I'm proud to say that I am one of them. This term will last uh, one year and serve under the leadership of NLC's Dr. David Blaine from Washington, D.C. I'm excited to represent my state, my county, and most of all, my hometown of Dublin, Georgia. Thank you all for the opportunity. Hello, everyone. Hello. Don't worry, the rest of them aren't speaking behind me. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the look of concern on y'all's faces. <laughs> but, um, hello. Uh, these three are a hard act to follow if you actually listen to what it is that they share with you all. But it is my hope that you see the pride that they possess in representing their peers, their schools, and the city on a state and national level. I stand before you today to provide you a very brief overview of our youth programs for the year 2020. Though the Summer Youth Works program is not an official city program, we still play a major part in its success while partnering with the Heart of Georgia Career Academy and the Chamber of Commerce. Over our 2020, plans were postponed, yet we kicked off the 2021 campaign earlier this year. All student applications have been received and we are now beginning our planning process for the next steps. Next is our Dublin Arts County Teen Court Program. By looking at these photos, you see that January 2020 began with cases like any normal year. However, as we all know, COVID-19 interrupted everything. Yet, I've continued to say over the past year, the business of the programs cannot stop. I'm happy to report that though we have not had the opportunity to open our court doors, we are still receiving applications from interested teen volunteers. Our program also joined the National Association of Youth Courts over the year, where we are very involved with this process. I've been invited to attend the West Virginia State Youth Court Conference and speak as a presenter while representing the Dublin Teen Court, as well as asked to represent our Dublin program at the Global Youth Justice Conference later in the year. Our teen court program is heading a team of teen court directors throughout the state to form a State of Georgia Teen Court Association. I'm very happy about this. And thank you, Mayor Best, for the, the go ahead on that. The third program is the Dublin City Youth Council. Unfortunately, we were unable to gather for a group photo, so this is the best that we have. Um, due to social, social distancing, we couldn't gather in here as usual. However, our students managed to flood my inbox with 19 selfies in front of a white wall, and I was able to create the post-it collage that you see right here in August, and we have not looked back since. Similar to Teen Court's 2020 journey, you see we began our year with extremely 
active participation. Our students visited Judge Harold McClendon and City Attorney Josh Powell, and we witnessed them in action. Thank you for that. Shortly after this visit to the courtroom, our world did change. What you see on the screen is how we have seen each other over the majority of the year. I'm sure this looks familiar to you all. We've attended state and national conferences, we've held committee meetings, council meetings, and more from our computer screens. Technology has helped us to continue our practices of networking with peers and positive youth engagement while still remaining safe. The teams participated in a community-wide COVID-19 PSA. They posted daily safety tips for the community and they provided positive quotes and scripture <coughs> to their peers on the program's social media accounts. The group donated earbuds to the city, Dublin City Schools for their virtual students and also presented Trinity Christian Schools with a no-touch hand sanitizer dispenser. And these ideas came from the youth. The students worked two consecutive weekends at East Lawrence Elementary and I almost said and changed slide, but I have it typed on the paper. <laughs> <laughs> the students worked two consecutive weekends at East Lawrence Elementary and helped build an outdoor classroom pod for the students. Georgia Municipal Association spotlighted our youth programs three times during 2020 in their magazine <coughs> for the program's work on youth engagement, promoting the census, and their efforts of helping the community in the beginning of the pandemic. Our teams provided treats to the city's customers during Georgia Cities Week. They also took time to hold several voter registration drives with their schools. The photo you see is a collage of students who either registered with our youth council within their school or they served on the youth council and they're now eligible to vote. They were excited and sent these photos to share with our program to show that they are now active voters at the age of 18. Youth Council partnered with Georgia Military College to do a fall food drive, which was another idea brought to us by a Youth Council student. They also partnered with the local Wings Agency to promote Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month and also the Domestic Violence Awareness Month. We are very thankful to the community and all local schools for their participation. So many photos were submitted from parents, students, school administrators, and local citizens. Our Christmas drive was a major success. Thank you to everyone in the community for donating items. Our gas department, and happy Gas Utility Workers Day, by the way, but our gas department donated over 200 bags for our teens to use. They really came in handy with all of the donations. Not only did we provide that many bags to the Stepping Stone Children's Center and the Lighthouse Adult Daycare Center, we were gifted a check of $1,000 from a local family to present to the two agencies. We cannot thank our local community enough for the support of, that all of you have given our youth programs. When I speak on the growth of our teens, I honestly mean it. They have a heart of gold. In memory of Dr. A. Jeroy Stuckey and his beautiful family, mm -hmm. our program is providing a $750 scholarship to a deserving Dublin High School senior from the 2021 graduating class. These funds were collected by our youth program. Though I have shared a lot of information today, I've only scratched the surface of what our teens have accomplished this year. Though COVID kept us apart for the majority of the time, we remained strong and we remained active. I'm extremely proud of them and I hope that each of you see the importance of the teens within our community and also of each one of these programs. Thank you. God, you couldn't be more proud of y'all. You, you've done a great job, and you're carrying on a good tradition, and, and everywhere you go, you represent us well. And yes. We appreciate that. Thank you. Yes. May I have Thank a question? Uh, question. Uh, Ms. Hogan, um, the Keith Dublin Law is beautiful. It's going to be sponsoring a Great American Clean Community Challenge on the 15th of May, and we would love to have um, the... Um, the youth involved with that. Okay. If, and uh, we will contact you so we can attend one of the meetings we have. Yes, sir. Thank you. It. Thank you. Thank you all. Good morning, folks. I'm John Nichols. I'm general manager at the uh, newly built uh, Bug House Pest Control Office here in 
Centerville, Georgia on Houston Lake Road, uh, where we've had a number of people, uh, companies that have been involved in trying to get this uh, building up and, and come in this office uh, ready. And, and one of those is A-plus flooring uh, and construction, uh, Kyle Gerard, uh, really had a major play in everything that happened with this building to get it to where it is today. Very, very pleased with his work and his uh, uh, his professionalism and, and number one, talking and, and making sure things are done right, but also uh, as far as examples and uh, 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 flooring and, and colors and stuff like that, really made a major difference as far as getting the building built. Uh, very thankful with, uh, with how it went about and how Kyle was very helpful, answered all the questions that he could. Um, and, and if he couldn't, then he got back with me and was very um, timely in making sure that that happened. But I just want to give a shout out to A-plus flooring and construction and tell Kyle, we appreciate you. You did a fantastic job. We're very thankful for our new building. The City of Dublin Natural Gas provides the most cost-efficient source of energy available today. So for your home, choose the most natural resource. Safe, clean, efficient. All new subdivisions around the Dublin area have natural gas available. Start reducing your energy bills today with Dublin City Natural Gas Department. Natural gas, the smart choice. Call 277-5048 today and let us help you start saving today. Okay, St. Patrick's question. Aaron Gobrock. Aaron Gobrock. <laughs> Mayor and City Councilman, good afternoon and thank you for your time today. My name is Lindsay Black. I'm one of the co chairmen of the Devil Lawrence St. Patrick's Festival along with Brian Nash. This year would have been the 56th annual Devil Lawrence St. Patrick's Festival. As you already know, Unfortunately, we were unable to have the festival sponsored events this year due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. The St. Patrick's Festival Committee appreciates the support of the Dublin City Council that they have given to the festival over the past 56 years since its inception in 1966. In addition to the great public and private business partnerships, the Festival Committee is a volunteer organization that takes year-round planning. The 2020-2021 Festival Committee was comprised of the following individuals who graciously volunteered their time and talents. Myself, Brian Nash, co-chairman, Royce Hall, Piper McAfee, Cameron Curry, Kim Barham, Tammy Waverick, Randy Stone, Glenda Ricks, Belinda Ricks, Robin Flanders, Practice Pat Patrick Thames, Abby McAllister, Debbie Frost, Jeff Cannon, Kathy Jones, Brandon Tarpley, and Mary Beth Court. We have also worked closely with Visit Dublin to help us manage and promote the spirit of the festival on social media. This year, the festival committee has been working with local news outlets to help highlight our festival's history throughout the years to keep the spirit of the Dublin Lawrence St. Patrick's Festival alive and well. We work closely with local historians to share the history and unique stories of our festival throughout the years. If you've not already, be sure to check out TV35's Facebook or YouTube channel, as well as issues of the Courier Herald for March to see all this coverage. In addition, we also continued our annual tradition of painting the shamrocks throughout the streets of downtown Dublin, where we also honor the late Eddie Schrader as the 2021 Honorary Leprechaun. Eddie was a beloved member of our community and our committee. Yesterday on St. Patrick's Day, our mascot Lucky spent the day spreading St. Patrick's joy to frontline healthcare workers and senior citizens. In 2022, we plan to organize and host several events that our city has come to know and love, including the Balloon Festival, the Arts and Crafts Festival, the Awards Banquet, Main Street Munchies, Super Suck Saturday Brunch, membership events, and more. Success of these events will greatly depend on your support and the support of the city police and county sheriff's office to provide manpower and law enforcement presence at these events. It will depend on the DDA to continue to help coordinate and organize the Arts and Crafts Festival in partnership with the committee. It will also depend on our partnership with Visit Dublin to promote the festival to tourists around the country, and it will depend on our many, many other businesses and organizations and sponsors. The festival is truly a team sport, and we are very appreciative to the mayor, the council, and the fine people of the city who contribute each year to allow us to sustain and grow the St. Patrick's Festival throughout the years. 
The Devin Lawrence St. Patrick's Festival is beloved in our city and throughout Middle Georgia, and we miss it. We are eagerly awaiting to celebrate again in 2022, and we're already making plans to make it bigger and better than ever. However, in order to do that, we depend on the help and assistance from our partners like the City of Dublin to make it a success, which is why I stand here today to humbly ask for your support, both financially and through in-kind contributions. Thank you for your continued support and contributions through the years. We are looking forward to 2022 when we can once again, together, march down West Jackson Street in our green, eat green grits in our green jackets, and attend all the events we love in celebration of our great city. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Any questions from council? We appreciate y'all very much. I know you the last couple of years have been kind of tough. And we, we appreciate y'all's leadership and uh, not necessarily making much popular decisions, but making the right decisions. And we thank y'all for what you've done. Thank you, sir. We're looking forward to next year. Yep. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Item number five is discussion and or action on award contract with Thomas and Hutton Engineering for the Hub Dudley Civil Rights Project concept uh, development phase. Mr. Kelly, do you mind coming up and just giving us a little update of where we are and what kind of what the layout is going forward? So, thank you, Mayor. Uh, so, we've been working with the with the city with the with the committee um, on the on the park and working on just some conceptual layouts again based on the ideas that are provided by the by the committee um, and trying to kind of put things together. You know, just take the ideas and, and get them down on paper so everybody can see them. The next step is going to be to come to the second meeting in April uh, with a with a concept uh, for the council to take a look at, and then after that, we we'll move on to, to public input. So that's where we are. So hopefully, sometime in May, maybe public meeting and we'll be the first one, and and then however many more we want to add after that. So. Any questions from council? You said in, in the second meeting in April you'll have a concept or an idea of what you. Yes. Based on the input from the committee, yes. Okay. okay. And um, uh, so, so the public would know when we get the original concept, we have that uh, meeting. You make a presentation. That's when we are going to invite the public in to give input. Correct. We'll probably have more than one opportunity. We'll have that meeting, and then we'll have a couple more public hearings in the city council chambers for people. We'll have it displayed for everybody to come in. So if somebody can't make one meeting, they can make one of those. Mr. Yeah. <clears throat> Mayor, I move for action on the contract to award the Tons of Hunting. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hear none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Item number six is discussion and or action on award to Thomas and Tutton Engineering for Engineering Services to develop an environmental protection division sewer work plan. And I think I just explained it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, staff recommendation would be to award the contract to do that to Thomas and Hutton in the amount of $18,100. So moved. So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, item number seven is discussion and or action on award of contract to Christian and Ellington Engineering Land Surveying for surveying and civil engineering costs associated with proposed shooting range on Henderson Road. Um, yes, and this, uh, Mr. Josh Christian and his firm, Mr. Christian has experience with designing shooting ranges in the military and uh, it's a local, local engineer. Um, we do all the engineering for it, all the survey, and this would include both items and for uh, design of the, there's a small structure that will be built out there also besides just the shooting range stuff. And the price of this is $18,090. Dollars and the staff recommendation is to award to Christian and Ellison. Make a motion for approval. Second. Get a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. 
Community Bank of Dublin Lawrence County is here to help with all of your financial needs. Our team knows what it takes to make life easy and convenient and will help you get set up with our mobile and online banking. We founded Community Bank on common sense banking and a dedication to help people just like you. Our loan officer Gail Rainey and branch manager Amy Thompson know what it takes to make life easy and convenient and can help you with loans with almost everything from your automobile, home, land, or any financial goals you have. Come visit us today. Community Bank of Dublin Lawrence County, where common sense banking never goes out of style. Hey folks, this is Don Carls with Dublin Chevrolet, and you have what we need. That's right, we need your trades. Trade-in values have never been higher, so come on in and take advantage of offers like these. This Silverado is only $33,650, or the Malibu is only $19,997, or the 21 Trailblazer for only $22,995. And remember, Don sells cars well, only at Dublin Chevrolet. Uh, Mr. Powell, do, do we need to do number eight and number nine separately? Yes, sir. Okay. You'll need the you know, public hearings on Okay, gotcha. Okay, item number eight is a second reading and public hearing of an ordinance to annex 0.02 acres, more or less, located at parcel ID DO1F087A as B2 Highway Oriented Business Zone. Uh, we will now close our, or excuse me, go ahead and read the resolution if you would. Uh, ordinance number 20-20, annexing and incorporating into the municipality of the city of Dublin, Georgia, 0 0.02 acres, more or less, of land located at parcel ID D01F087A in land lot number 128 of the First Land District of Lawrence County as B2 Highway Oriented Business Zone. The proposed use is for commercial retail development. Okay, we will now close the city council meeting and open the public hearing and ask if there's anyone here that'd like to speak in favor of the proposed uh, ordinance change and I or the uh, annexation. And I see that uh, aren't you representing the owner? If we, if anyone has any question, Brian. Yes. Right. Right. Okay, Brian Ellington with Christian and Ellington is here representing the owner. Would anyone like to speak in favor of it? Not is there anyone like to speak in opposition to this proposed annexation? Hearing none, we will now close the public hearing, reopen city council meeting, and turn it over to uh, Mr. Daniel to call the roll. Well, we need a motion first. I make the motion. You got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Daniel, will you please call the roll? Councilman Brown. Yes. Councilman Jones. Yes. Councilman Gerald Smith. Yes. Councilman Edwards. Yes. Councilman Griggs. Yes. Councilman Chris Smith. Yes. Councilman Davis. Yes. Ordinance passes. Okay, thank you. And then item number nine is dealing with a, with a joint piece of property, which is assembly for this development. And it's the second reading and public hearing of an ordinance to annex 9.82 acres more or less located in parcel ID D01F087 as B2 Highway Oriented Business Zone. Mr. Jones. It's ordinance number 20-21, annexing and incorporating into the municipality of the city of Dublin, Georgia, 9.82 acres more or less of land located at parcel ID D01F087 in land lot 128 and 168 of First Land District. Lawrence County is B2, how we oriented business zone. Proposed use is for commercial retail development. Okay. We will now close uh, our city council meeting and open the public hearing and ask if there's anyone here to speak in favor of this proposed annexation. Mm -hmm. Tonight we will here close the uh, public hearing, reopen the city council meeting, and uh, ask if there's anyone, well, excuse me, but I'm <laughs> we need to see if there's anybody who wants to speak enough. <laughs> if not, now we will close the uh, uh, public hearing and reopen the city council meeting. And uh, we we'll put approval, Mr. Second. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? Mr. Blake, you 
McDonald's Road. Councilman Davis. Yes. Councilman Chris Smith. Yes. Councilman Griggs. Yes. Councilman Edwards. Yes. Councilman Gerald Smith. Yes. Councilman Jones. Yes. Councilman Brown. Yes. Ordinance passes. Thank you. Y'all see why it's time for me to retire. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that brings us to item number 10, and that's citizens' comments. Are there any citizens that'd like to address our council tonight? Yes, sir. Well, I'd say good evening to the council. Uh, in, in 2015, I was fortunate enough to be a part of the uh, Cross the Creek Cemetery Committee, along with Lance Jones and Mrs. Contreras, uh, and a lot of them have died and gone on. Since that time, I've been able to have a memorial down there on Memorial Day. I can uh, maybe a chaplain from the VA hospital and a uh, preacher from the neighborhood or whatever. But this year, I want to kind of uh, make it grow a little bit. I've spoken with Mr. Keith Griffin over at the VA, so the VA is going to be involved this year. And we plan to do it after the Memorial Day program at the VA. They're probably going to bust something down there. Um, and uh, I think one of the chaplains is going to speak. But this year I'd like to see some of the city officials there because it is a city cemetery. And, and, and I'm down there three or four times a week. It's kind of my place of solitude, you know, and it, and it looks real good. But uh, I'm, I'm finding out that still, that the cemetery is still not well known, you know, for some reason. There's a lot of World War I veterans back there, World War II. I don't think it's Vietnam back there because the last burial was in 1965. This year, I would like to see some city officials there uh, to, to be recognized and, and make, try to make this, this an ongoing every year, you know, uh, ceremony. But I will be reminded about in May sometime, okay? So if you can give me the information, I'll make sure it's, it's well publicized to council and on our social media page. Yeah, we'll do. Thanks a lot. Can, can we get you to state your name? Just oh, I'm yeah. going to James. I mean, I'm going to get you better myself. Thank you, Mr. Wendy. So. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Dustin Gay. I'm a local orthopedic surgeon with Houston Clinic Orthopedics, and we'd really like to invite everybody to come out to our new uh, office facility to take a look at it. It's a larger space with physical therapy, and uh, we're just excited to have it, and we'd love for people to come out and visit us. Come by and see us today at our brand new location, the Houston Clinic Medical Drive in Dublin. At Lakes Alignment, we would like to take this time to thank our community for your support over the last 66 years, and especially these last few months with the opening of our brand new truck center. When you drive into Lakes Alignment, you get master trained technicians like Anthony Penny. Everybody calls him Bug, but it means so much to us. And on behalf of Neil Harden, Lisa, our staff, and the entire Lake family, we thank you for supporting us since 1954. Come see us today. We open every morning at 8 o'clock, and now our truck center is open on Saturday to serve your big trucks and equipment from 8 until 12. At Lakes Alignment, we thank you and this entire community, and we'll continue to serve you with the best trained staff and friendly, courteous service. Lakes Alignment. Hometown people serving hometown people. Come see us today, 104 Johnson Street, East Dublin. Okay, if any other citizens like to address council? If not, we'll go to uh, county. Oh, wait, we got one. Uh, we got one. Ms. Nikki Stevens. Got an appointment. Excuse me. Miss Nikki Stevens, are you here? Okay, well, maybe Miss Nikki will reschedule. Okay, we will now go to a council of comments and we'll start with Mr. Brown. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just want to uh, thank everybody for being here. Uh, as I mentioned in my prayer, let's uh, continue to lift up the Dr. Gerard Stucky family. And, uh, and that's just a horrible, tragic situation. And uh, let's just remember to keep the family in our thoughts and prayers. Continue to practice. Uh, as I said, good hygiene, social distancing, and, and hope for the short runs of this COVID-19 uh, disease. And just, uh, again, thank everybody for being here. Sir. Mr. Davis. 
want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, first, I also want to just speak a little bit and have everybody remember uh, Dr. Stuckey uh, is supposed to have the memorial service on uh, Saturday. So uh, let's uh, lift them up in prayer. Also remember the employees uh, that uh, City Manager John mentioned earlier that was involved in our accident. Let's keep them lifted up in prayer. Thanks to everybody that presented today. And I want to thank everybody for coming. And I just have to keep uh, emphasizing that in order, whenever we are doing a project, a unity project, all of the communities have to be involved. So it would be what it is, a unity uh, a project. And so I thank uh, everybody for coming and stay involved with that uh, process. So your voice will be heard. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Uh, Mr. Chris Smith. Uh, I just want to thank everyone for coming. I uh, appreciate everyone that came and gave presentations. Uh, Ms. Kelsler, you know, she's probably in the back. Uh, keep doing what you're doing with the youth council. That's amazing what you're doing with the youth. Uh, thank Patrick's committee, Mr. Um, and also Mr. Lindsay. Well, uh, I'll definitely be there to uh, make the memorial for this year. And it's like uh, Councilman Brown and Councilman Davis said, remember the Stucky family. Please say a special prayer for this. Still the family, this is a tragedy. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Griggs. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. Uh, all the presenters that presented everything today. Um, and echo pretty much what everybody else has said. Please stay, continue to work on staying safe and um, practice all of that every day. And uh, have a good week. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Gerald Smith. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to also thank everybody for coming and all the presentations that were made tonight. I just thought they were excellent. Everybody who got up and spoke, I thought did a good job, a great job, and especially the kids. Uh, so impressed with the youth that we've got coming along to the future leaders, and it looks like we're going to be in good hands. Uh, so thanks for that. Appreciate the engineering work for getting done and making a lot of progress with, with the projects that are important to a lot of people. And uh, don't forget, we still got this virus threat out there, so be safe. And uh, thank you all for, for all you do to make Dublin what it is. That's all. Thank you. I tried to slip by and skip Curtis, but uh, <laughs> 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 uh, appreciate that. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for coming. Uh, thank everyone for the presentations they've given. And, uh, you council has done an outstanding job representing the, the city of Dublin. Um, you know, the, the Stucky family, uh, I mean, not enough good things to be said about him as a person, as a role model, and um, you know, very, very shocked whenever I got the news on that. So please be in prayer for all of the, everyone that's affected. I know it had great effect on the staff and students at Dublin High School. And this is one thing that we need to keep all of them in our prayers as well. Um, also to see employees and also every meeting. You know, thank you for everything, each and every one of you do every day. Um, you know, people don't realize that it's kind of dangerous from things I do, you know, day in and day out, you know, a lot of hazards and this is one of the things that you normally would expect to happen, the tragedy uh, that it happened and we just hope that keeping our prayers that they are able to, both are able to fully recover uh, from what happened. Uh, but uh, I thank everyone for coming and uh, everyone stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to echo what everyone said about the Stucky family. Um, but also, I want everyone to, while you're keeping the Stucky family in your prayers, to keep up the Devon City school system. All I'll say is two places that politics shouldn't get into, and that's schoolhouse and church. You have the Bible to, to govern the church, and how it should be ran, and you have the best interests of the children that should be at the schoolhouse. And I say that I'm uh, making sure that. When this is over, with, our children still have to go on, have to be educated. They have some huge shoes to fill there. And so we have to pray that the right person comes in and take that place and um, do the good, and do a good job. 
and we don't allow politics and favoritism to get in the way, and we end up going backwards instead of forwards. So let's keep that in prayer and also keep that in mind. As we're talking about a community, unifying our community, God don't make a mistake. It's the reason all this happened. You know, so let's keep it in prayer, let's stay encouraged, but at the same time, let's keep it, let's keep our head on forward, what's going on, we'll keep endeavoring going forward. Also, um, like to um, the family of the um, workers and workers that got, that got hurt this morning, heard about it, one of my best drivers radio that on the radio about that, not knowing, not only did um, the school employee, but uh, one of the people involved, one of my workers was the one that was, um, that was her father, one was her father. So we got that news later, so let's keep them in prayer. And for healing, you know that God is a healer, and God we are healed. So let's keep them in prayer, so keep them going. But let's look at what our school, our youth, youth is doing a good job as we look around and see. We got two youth that, that made it to the National League of City on their convention, planning things. I don't think you understand the magnitude of that. That's youth from all across the, the um, United States applied for this. And we have youth here in Dublin, Georgia, got elected to be on those committees, not only from Dublin, but representing the state of Georgia, the only ones from the state of Georgia. So that's saying a lot. Both of these youth, they may or should be commended for what they're doing and for what our youth council is doing. They notice the green, just like they notice us from our green jackets. They notice our young people with that green polos when they go. Soon they see those green polos, they know that's Dublin, Georgia, wherever we go at. So our youth is on the move. Let's not say that all our youth is out, not out there doing bad things. Some of our youth are out there doing positive things. They need to be commended for what they're doing. And our youth has done a wonderful job of keeping the city of Dublin on the map. Youth Council and Team Court. Our Team Court has become a training ground. When other team people on Team Court, they come to see the Dublin to get out of start a youth Team Court to train their people about Team Court. So we are the state of Georgia trainers for Team Court. So our youth is doing a wonderful job. And speaking about our Youth Council application, they are accepting applications. So you know any young people, upcoming sophomore to upcoming senior, that one that you know should, that should make a good person on the Youth Council, they have until April the 2nd to get the application in. See Ms. Holder, go and see the Dublin website, Youth Council website, pull that down and get that turned in immediately as soon as possible. It's a wonderful program. COVID has stopped a lot of things, but they'll start by interacting. I, mean, I, can't, I don't know about my other fellow council members, but I can't wait to start that networking that we were doing before. Sitting there, I haven't taken any classes because I tell you, I can't sit in front of my computer for three to eight hours <laughs> taking a class. <laughs> First of all, my job won't allow me to do it in distraction, so I can't do it. So I love that interaction. So let's, we're almost there, almost at the finish line. We're getting our shots. I know I get mine in a couple of weeks, my second shot in a couple of weeks, but let's not let down our guards and go back to the step forward. Let's keep doing what we're supposed to do, wear our masks. Let's keep continuing washing our hands. Get vaccinated. I know that fear of it. Let's get vaccinated. So we can get past this and get to the finish line and get to the, get to where we're going at. And I thank the community for coming out. I mean, it's great to see people from the community here. I haven't seen this many people in a while, and this is a controversial topic that we're talking about. <laughs> but just to see people here listening to what's going on and find out what's going on in your community, this is the only way you're going to find out is by attending council meeting, engaging your council members, engaging the mayor and council, and seeing what's going on. This is the only way that you'll find about it. And thank you for coming. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ms. Powell? Uh, yeah. No comment. Mr. Jones? Nothing in addition, Mr. May. Okay, I, I would like to add one thing. We've got two people that always help us at behind the curtain most of the time. Yes. But, uh, Robert, where are you? And uh, <laughs> look, Brooke, back here. <laughs> and, and we notice not only is our audience better here, but since they have taken this over and fine-tuned it, I was watching and there have been up to 40 participants watching on, from their home. So it's a good thing. Good job, guys, and we appreciate what y'all doing. No further business for Sam Jeremy.